So are you thinking about what is dynamic programming? So in this video, we will talk about dynamic programming and I will also show you an example and how it works. So basically dynamic programming involves that storing the results of what you have calculated previously and using that when you're calculating results afterwards. Basically, in our daily life as well, there are a lot of applications like uh, financial calculations, traffic flow, a lot of these stuff that involves uh, data that has been calculated in the past. And obviously, if you again, you're recalculating it again and again, it will take a lot of time. So this is where dynamic programming comes into the picture. You do not need to recalculate the data again and again. You need to store those results in the state and then use it when you are calculating the results afterward. For instance, in financial market, you need to calculate something and then for that you are calculating the data of past 365 days and the next day again you are calculating the data of past 365 days. The optimal solution would be to store the data that you have already calculated the previous day, previous day into a state variable and uh, then, you know, fetching the data from there and then just calculating the, you know, current day data and then adding in the previous data and then showing the results. So it is sort of like that. So to go into more details, I will share my screen and I will show you an example that is Fibonacci series and how we calculate Fibonacci series and how dynamic programming helps it to make it very fast. So let's dive right into it. So first of all, what is Fibonacci series? Fibonacci series involve that you have two numbers and then the results of the next number is the sum of the first two number. And in this, the first two numbers are one and one. So the third Fibonacci series number is two. Then we have like one and two. The next entry is two plus one, three. Then it will be three plus two, five. Five plus three, eight. So it involves calculating the data of previous two entries. And then the next, uh, you get the next Fibonacci number, right? So and this, the first solution is the recursive solution. And you can see in the, this illustration as well that you have this, you know, n number that can be 5, that can be 10 or 15. And then you go down the road, right? n minus 1, n minus 2. Then you go again down the road. So you are, because you need to calculate, you know, uh, small elements. And then, you know, you just basically grow up and come to the main number that you want to calculate. So... Basically, like if I come down this, uh, first I have to execute that. This is a Python code. Uh, and then I am executing that in Visual Studio code. So I have executed that. Then I'm saying, okay, let's calculate that for Feb uh, of 10. So it is like very quick. You can see 55 is the result. And then I calculate that for 38. And it is right now taking some time because it is calculating, you know, a uh, fib of three, four, then like five, six, then seven, eight, because it is calculating, 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 you know, different elements and then going to the next step. So that's why it took, you know, 4.2 seconds and this is the number. So yeah, it takes like a lot of calculation to go up there. Then if I run that on a bigger number, because as I told you, it is a recursive solution. So if I run that on a bigger number, it will, you know, it keep on going and keep on going. It will take a lot of time because in this, you can see if the n equal equal to one or n equal equal to two, then the result is one. As I told you, the first two uh, results are one uh, in the Fibonacci series. Then the third one is two. Then we have three. So this is why that's why we hard coded this uh, and we are calling this as the base case and then afterwards what we do if we have you know here like six six minus one five and then six minus two four we are calculating five and four and then 
adding them up then again calling this it's like a recursive function we are again calling that function again and again to calculate the result of that particular fibonacci number so that's why it is calling again and again it is taking a lot of time you can see like uh, one minute passed by still we didn't get the result so i will just stop it and i will go to what is the other solution of this particular problem so yeah to solve this we can have a state uh, object or you can say state array in that we store all the results and we do not need to calculate something that is already calculated so this algorithm is called fib memo and in this you can see that i have this number uh, that is dynamic like whatever number i pass and then i have this memo object that memo object stores the result of the particular fibonacci numbers that we have already calculated so you can see in this uh, illustration as well that one uh, result is one two result is one three result is two similarly like that we will store all the results uh in these key value pairs and if something is already calculated we do not need to calculate that so uh you can see here and if n in memo then return memo n right so if uh, this is the base case again if n equal equal to one or two then just you know add this in the memo and now you can see like we are storing we are populating our memo this is our you know uh memory that we have we are creating ourselves to you know fast the whole processing speed and this we what we do is you know uh we have fib uh, memo n equal to fib memo and then we are doing it like this and the good thing about this is like it will not redo again and again because this case will be executed a lot of time so that's why like it it, it will be very fast like uh, now you can see 35 is calculated because in the previous one it took like uh, 4.2 second but for this one it took like you know instant zero seconds if i calculate that for 100 it is still very fast and now I will, you know, run that for a very big number. And now it will fail actually. Because why it fails? This is the main thing that it actually reached the maximum recursion limit. So this is the thing like, you know, again, you have implemented the solution, but still, you know, you uh, can, you know, ran into a problem that there are too much recursion. That's why you face this particular error. To solve this, we have another technique as well in dynamic programming that is bottom-up approach. And in this, what we actually do, uh, basically, we have the memo, like the way we have in the previous approach. But in this, we what we do is like, for, uh, we have first the base case, then we have, uh, we are basically doing a for loop and then uh like you can see we are doing a for loop from i to uh from i for instance you know that is uh the incremental number and then n plus one right n plus one is our n can be like five ten whatever the fibonacci number is right and then it is starting from three why it is starting from three because the first two entries we already know it is like one and one so that's why we are saying it is starting from three three onwards we need to calculate and to calculate that it is basically looping you know and then we have already stored the result of uh you know memo one and memo two and then we just need to calculate for like uh you can say memo 10 so the loop will run again and again again and again and we're not calling the function itself again and again so in this we are not calling the function we are just you know uh, we have a for loop and for loop is calculating for us and this is very good you know example that in your case for instance you need to calculate something and to calculate that you need like you know previous data and you know that all the data is in a particular trend that you know you have this value then you have this value and you add them you get a value then you add this particular element and then you get the next value in that case you can you know apply the bottom-up approach and using that like you basically 
create some sort of for loop and then you just calculate that whole uh, just loop it and till you reach the end result and then in this you will not face this particular uh, recursive uh, error as well that maximum recursion depth has been uh, achieved so i will call this the basic one then i will call with 35 then i will call with this 7000 and you see like instant i get the result and with this uh, store i on 7000 i get the error right so but with this approach i'm not getting any error i will just increase that to 14000 right and still i get the result like so you can see like it has calculated it very fast and the result is so big so in that way the bottom up approach is right so th this approach of uh, you know store uh, memo and bottom up it is very useful i have uh, you know uh, solve a lot of different sort of problems using this approach and uh, the same concept is with you know caching as well like if you uh, you know think about caching what it actually does it checks that do we have this particular data already stored in our cache if we have we will just return it otherwise we will calculate that so this is caching like redis memcache this is what we do like we see okay this is a particular result that we already have we will just fetch it from the cache rather than you know calculating that so it is sort of like that but obviously it is more in terms of calculation uh and then we're not using any caching solution with that but like uh, consider it in that way so uh, and then you will find a lot of different applications where you can use these approach where you have like you know uh data continuous data and uh the next data that you need to calculate is based on the previous data and you're finding trends and you're finding average of the data and stuff like that this is where it comes in very handy so yeah that's it from this video and if you like this video just you know hit the like button and comment down below and if you need more details on dynamic programming and in general you know regarding coding challenges and regarding these algorithm sort of videos just let me know and i can create more content on this so until next time have a nice day Bye bye